Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel, I'm Eric and today we are watching episode 6 of uh, season 2 of Avatar The Legend of Korra. So last time around what happened? A good deal happened. Uh, it ended with a massive cliffhanger. Korra, um, I mean it looked like Korra was swallowed by an, a water spirit. A pretty big water spirit that she tried to purify but was not able to. And she was just like eaten up. I don't know what's gonna come of that. It's interesting. I mean, the 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 season is titled Spirits, like the book book two Spirits, and um, spirits have been taken kind of a backseat. Like there was the um, there was the thing with the southern uh, portal, the spirit portal, that um, Unlak had Korra go to and open. But besides that, like, there's not been a whole lot of spirit activity. So, I don't know. I'm curious to see as how the, the two are going to connect to each other, you know. In other news, uh, Korra and Mako broke up. That was a bit of a surprise. Although, I mean, the writing was kind of on the wall. I don't know, I think that I... Asami and Mako made more sense to me. Maybe I'm just completely wrong on that too, but for me it felt like that relationship made more sense. I was suspicious of Asami at first, of course, but it passed. And apparently I had reason to be suspicious, because like initially she was supposed to be like a double agent or something. Uh, I, I've seen that in the comments on Patreon. I don't know. Either way, uh, the conflict is growing in size, I think. Like now, um, Republic City is involved in the mess with Korra like, having leading a, a protest against Northern aggression. <laughs> it's kind of the war of Northern aggression. <laughs> but for once, the North, North is in the wrong. So that's kind of funny. But yeah, it's spread to Republic City. There was a bombing uh, of... Uh, a cultural center, I think. I'm not quite, I'm not 100 sure, but I think that's what it was. And uh, everyone was very keen to put the blame on the Northern Water Tribe for that uh, terrorist act. But Marco was suspicious and uh, like he's investigating it. It seemed, it looked like triads were behind it. And from the Agni Kai triad, that was it. And um, no one believes him, apparently. I don't know why. I don't, I don't understand why everyone is so gung-ho about blaming the North. I understand that Korra would be like that because they have her family. They have her parents uh, kind of captive. And like her home is under siege. So I understand that she wants to like blame everything on them and go kick butt. But like the police, I don't, I don't understand that. Are they just lazy or are they corrupt? What, what's up? Either way, um, I'm keen to find out more. Let's go see what happens next. And as always, I just want to mention Patreon. On the Patreon early access and full episode reactions, they are not edited down like here on YouTube. So check it out if you want to, link in the description. With that said, let's go. Someone has attacked the Southern Water Tribe Cultural Center. Yeah, it was the Cultural Center. <laughs> All the evidence, no, none of the evidence points to that. Sami has also ventured into business with Barry, and a shipment of her mecha tanks is on its way to help the South in its war. Yeah, about that. What the hell is going on? Is he just extremely profit-centric, Varric? That seemed like... his ideas seemed so incredibly stupid. Is he just eccentric, or is there something else going on there? Oh my, what's going on here? Here you are. Well, I mean, this certainly does look like um, waterbenders. <laughs> Terrorists. Eric is not going to be happy about this. Oh, no. Was that the shipment of mecha tanks? Perhaps? Is this the north? Must be, right? What have you been up to? You came from inside. Spirit world? Never mind that. Yes, mind that. Where have you been? You didn't get her? The Avatar is dead. 
the avatar is not dead. No way. <laughs> Exciting music. <laughs> we finally made it. Now we must stop the evil Unalak. Yes, you must. I will conquer the world with my <laughs> waterbending doomsday device. Of course. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Wartime propaganda movies. Just like, uh, I know it was a big thing during World War II, at least. I don't know about World War I. You're not just the hero of the South. You're our best friend. Nook Tuckity. You two are the best. <laughs> He's the biggest, baddest, stunningest man I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> He's a friggin' natural. When you're a star, people love stars. Stars tell them what to think and how to act. These movers will have the support of the people, and before long, they'll persuade the president to lend his troops to the war effort. And you'll sell tons of stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, I love the water bending effects. It's funny because, like, there must be water benders they can use. It's no use fighting, Doc Doc. I mean, they pro actually they probably are using um, water benders for the effects just off screen. But it, like most of the time, it looks like hoses or barrels or like buckets from off screen. What's wrong? Are you oh. mad because I left you in the clutches of the evil Unalak? I'm gonna save no. you in the next episode, Ginger! Let's work through this! She's just stuck up. Unfortunately. The good news is it looks like your first mover has gotten a great reception. That's old news! Let's go! <laughs> oh, Julie. Julie has it rough. She has a rough job. Your entire shipment was stolen. Without that sale, I don't know how much longer I can keep my company going. What am I gonna do? Don't worry. Yeah, it was her mecha tanks. And smack dab in Republic City's jurisdiction, which means another problem for us. Uh, all this stress is gonna turn old Black <laughs> So is that a good thing? Is there anything else about the attack you remember? Anything unusual? There Explosives? Is Took my fifth favorite ship in the Varric Industries fleet. Named her after my mom. Rest in peace, Rocky Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Mako! Chief, I don't think the people who attacked were Northern Water Tribe. Of course they were Northern Water I, Tribe. I don't get it. Water bending. Yes, they were, but... Another open and shut case for the dynamic mustachio duo. Wait, I think Maka might be onto something. Chief, I know it's a long shot. Like, the... the I can understand the two... These two... These two idiots, but... Chief Beifong? I don't know why she's in on it. Lu and Gong are idiots. Yes, they are. And their stupid mustaches. They very much are idiots. We can make it work. Just the two of us. I don't know. I don't want to go behind Beifong's back. No, that's not a good idea. Future Industries is all I have left of my family. I want to help you. But this is more than a two-person job. Okay, let's let's talk for a second. Like <laughs> I am not surprised considering the time period. Like Everything about this screams like the Roaring Twenties, or like Thirties, around that time in American uh, history. About about this like society, the way it looks, the way it acts, the way it behaves, and like I'm not surprised in the slightest that there would be corrupt cops, because that's the only conclusion I can draw at this point, that they are so aggressively against. Like they're either I don't think because I don't think they're that stupid or maybe they are just that stupid and lazy that they don't want to do their job that they don't want to investigate they're just like no uh, northern water tribe we're done but I don't think that's like it because that required means that they need to investigate that as well don't they or can they just like write it off and not do anything about it but I it makes more sense for them to be corrupt but that begs the question who's the mastermind who's behind it because i don't think it's unalak he doesn't care um and whoever is doing it is making an awful lot of effort to make the northern water tribe out to look like bad guys 
So that makes no sense for him to be behind it. Is it the triad? Because like the triads are in on it, but what is what's the angle? You know, like what's what's the benefit of it? Like with stealing the ship uh, and stealing the goods, that makes sense because that like they can sell it, I guess. But bombing the cultural center, that makes no sense. So it is another mystery, and I enjoy mysteries. I like it very much. And yeah, let's see what happens. First of all, we'd need a ship. Ah! You need a ship? I got a ship. Yeah, of course I'm you do. In on whatever you're talking about, I love being in on plans. The less you. <laughs> oh, this guy. Let's get this sting operation going. Not yet. We need some extra manpower. What about Cora? Yeah, actually, she's um. She's, out of town right <laughs> she's now. very much out of town. Yeah, yeah. Forget about Cora. I'll go talk to Bo. Oh, she doesn't know. He doesn't want to tell. A hat rack. We don't even have hats. That's because we've never had a hat rack. <laughs> Build it and they will come. You need my help. Ugh, I don't know. I'm kind of busy. <laughs> You're sitting in a hot tub. I'm maintaining my instrument. Oh, this has gone to his head so fast. What am I supposed to do now? I don't know, Mako. Figure it out. Remember? That's what she said to me. Hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do have a point. But it's our last resort. Who are you going to see? Hey, Mako. Oh no, triad people. And I thought the triple threats might want a piece of the action. How big a piece? This is concerning. I might be able to convince her to give Shady Shin his bending back. Sounds good to me, boss. Yeah, boss. What about the rest of us? Hey, they're the people she kicked the ass off in the first episode. I mean, it's kind of a good idea to hire criminals to catch criminals, right? Which is what we're doing here. And it's basically what I'm always doing. I mean, I am a gangster after all. And I... Two Toad Ping, please. <laughs> okay, I like Two Toad Ping. <laughs> the accents, the, the phrasing, just like I. I love this setting so, so much. You broke up? When? Why didn't you tell me? I don't know. Because <laughs> he was ashamed. Yeah, all right. yeah, it actually did happen. Marco says he broke up with the Avatar. Sure he did. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> you kiss her. Wait a minute. Maybe that will work. Yes, it's genius. <laughs> Everybody take five. <laughs> Except for you, Julie. <laughs> Poor Julie. But I really like Varric. He's always, he's funny. In a deranged kind of way. A minute ago when we were shooting, you were into me. But now you're not. That's because Ginger loves Nuktuk, not Bolin. But Nuktuk is Bolin. No, dude. It's called acting, dude. And they call me Two-Toed Pink. Oh, because you have two extra. Two extra okay. toes. So how long do we have to stay out here? I told you, it's gonna be a few hours. Are these people the guys behind it? Keep Mako and that dame distracted for a few hours, so that's what we're gonna do. Oh really? Who paid you? Where do you think you're going? I have thoughts. I'm not sure about them, though. That was a nice landing. I like the look of it. Oh my. They're getting closer. Not for long. Watch out! Oh, that's brave. Oh, okay. It's a poor position to fight waterbenders in. Hang on to something. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Someone paid the triple threats to keep us distracted. Distracted? From what? That's a great question. Oh. Oh no, her warehouse. It's over. We should check out your other warehouses. Maybe they didn't have time to hit them all. You don't understand. This was the only one. It's over. 
I give up. Well, I'm not giving up. You're not allowed to give up. Poor Asami. Sorry. I... Uh. No, don't be sorry. Or, I guess... No, don't be sorry. And I know just who to ask. <laughs> hey, Marco! Uh, you're not mad about last night, are you? <laughs> I think he is. And you're gonna tell me, or we're gonna have to change your name to No Toad Ping. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, please! I would never lie to you with my lucky toes on the line! <laughs> yeah. <Get out> of <laughs> he has a point. Bowl in. Nuk Tuk? Nuk Tuk. Yes! Oh! Hello, Mako. <laughs> Oh, good lord, dude. Anyway, wish I could stand around here and chit chat, but you know, I gotta go shoot my big scene. Aren't you important, Bolin? Yeah. It's a Varric Industries exclusive. Oh, is it now? The explosions use a remote. It's all coming together, huh? I think I know who set us up. Hello. <laughs> yes, hello. Was it all just a plot? Varric bought a controlling interest in future industries. It oh no, girl. You think you know who hired the triple threats? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm real close to proving it. Oh my word. We have some talking to do. Hey, Cora. Where have you been, girl? Fire sages? Right? Who's Avatar Korra? Oh. Temporary memory loss, huh? That might actually be a good thing. Okay. Let's see here. Where do we start? It's nice to see that Korra is okay for once. Um, I mean, I don't think there was ever any doubts about that. And I think that maybe memory loss can be a good thing for her because it might be an, an excuse to find herself and um, come face to face with some of the less desirable aspects of her personality. <laughs> like as she's rediscovering who she is. It's like, oh, I don't like this part. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. But the big thing then, Varric. Like, when they said that um, on the boat, that they were hired, that that got me, that, that's the first, like, that's the first point of suspicion. Because if they were hired, who were they ha hired by? They, like, it's unlikely for someone new to be introduced at this point, essentially. Like for someone, for some random person to just show up and be like, yes, I am the person who's trying to ruin your company. Like that, that makes very little sense for me. It makes more sense for it to be someone in, in the story. Like for instance, if it hadn't been Lin Beifong, like if it hadn't been, if it had been like just a random person Someone who we didn't know, who we didn't have a connection to, because Lin and Tenzin had been item, and Lin is also like Toff's, uh, Toff's daughter, I think. Daughter, yeah, not granddaughter. She's a daughter. Um, like in that case, this what am I about to say now? Doesn't make any sense, but it could have made sense if it was someone else for the police chief to be, if the police chief was corrupt, and trying to cover it up. Like that could have been someone who. Who, who could have been behind this for, for some reason, for like personal benefit or some reason, I don't know what reason, but like that could have been a possibility. But when you also add in money, uh, hiring the triad, I mean, that can't be cheap. Like if it was the police chief, then it can just like have been blackmail, like forcing the triad to do this or getting them locked, thrown in jail, essentially. So that's like, that's when I started getting a little suspicious. Which is a shame because I really, really like Varric. I don't think that Varric is doing it because he's obviously the person who, who's behind everything. Uh, 
And I don't think he's doing it out of like any sort of malice. I think he is just trying to make money. Like, I don't think he's doing it because he's secretly in league with uh, Unalak or anything else. Like, I, I think he's just doing it solely for money. No other reason. <laughs> uh, and and this whole thing was just a ploy to take over future industries. Because I'm betting that they have a lot of very valuable patents. Or maybe not. Because like my understanding was that the basically every vehicle, every vehicle with an engine uh, are a derivative of Sato mobiles and like who owns the Sato mobile future industry industries does. Like I would not expect them to ever run out of run out of money as long as people need cars. But maybe not, maybe that's been co-opted, maybe the it's not maybe they don't have the patents on that anymore or maybe I don't know. Maybe patents are not a thing in Avatar. So maybe the whole plan, everything, was just to get what happened at the end of this episode. To get a controlling interest in futures, future industries. And like it makes more sense for it to be someone in the story. And Varric, maybe that means that his eccentricity has just been a front. That he just he just plays to be this like crazy rich person who is just like very very eccentric who is all over the place nuts and very friendly and very jovial and like maybe that's just an act and that makes sense actually because he seems to be very successful and you don't get to be that way if you're not very shrewd and i mean varric would have the money to hire triads he would have the money to hire people to do all sorts of things I am still, however, unclear as to the motive for it. As of right now, I'm just going with like gut feeling that it's just to get a controlling share of uh, future industries, and like that's it, just money. It's gonna be. We'll have to wait and see, I guess, to see if there's any other motives behind it. It just kind of sucks because I really liked Varric. I don't know. I'm still. I'm not writing him off completely yet. Like, he still has a chance to redeem himself, but that depends on what the motives were for it. And, like, there's, like, at least... I think there's 14 episodes to this season, so there's, like, at least half an, half a season left for him to to redeem himself. So we'll see. Great episode, though. Uh, really fun. And it worked really well, despite Korra and basically not being in it whatsoever. I'm looking forward to the next one. I'm looking forward to see what happens with Korra now that she's lost her memory. And she's on an island with, uh, I think they're fire sages. I can't be sure, but I mean, they have to be, right? Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, take care, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace out.